The Linfield Good Samaritan School of Nursing pinning ceremony is a time where we celebrate our graduates with their bachelors of science in nursing. We have three graduations each year. Today, we recognize our summer graduates, 56 pre-licensure students and 17 RN to BSN students. Today is a special day of celebration. Students, you have given much of yourself to learn the ways of nursing. Your family and loved ones have given you space and support so that you could learn and grow. Your faculty and staff have provided direction and are so proud of you today. You honor their gift today. At this time, I wanna take a moment to thank the faculty and staff who have turned out in celebration today. Our faculty and staff have been at the center of your educational journey and the students' lives for the past two years. From administration to student services, staff participate daily to create a culture of engagement and excellence that fosters student success. Our faculty are highly dedicated to the nursing profession and providing a high quality education program while challenging and supporting student learning. Part of the work life of faculty, reading, writing, clinical practice, research to improve teaching and learning, but is also much more. Our faculty and staff both influence students in the classroom, in clinical settings, in hallways, in committee meetings, in campus events, and in offices. They have left their imprint of excellence on our students. Please join me in giving our faculty and staff a round of applause. To the families of our students here today, we ask more of our nursing students than we ask of almost any other major. Our students complete pro this program in four intense semesters. Our program bears witness to human struggles that other students almost never encounter. While nursing is an honor and can be very rewarding and even joyful, the journey is at times both emotionally and physically draining. Our students could not have done it without you, the families, the friends who have supported them. You've been there for calls, text, emails. You've listened to them vent. You've laughed. Perhaps you've cried. But now they've made it through and their hard work they have received along the way. For every pinning ceremony, the students elect one of their own to address the class. This year's honored student is Diane Gasprin. Hello, Accelerated BSN Class of 2020, Linfield faculty, family, and friends. My name is Diane Gasperin, and I'm so honored to have been chosen by my peers to deliver this year's graduation address. This is especially meaningful to me because the last time I graduated from college tw was 25 years ago. And as you're doing the math of how old actually is Diane, I'll tell you that's not really important, but what is important is the fact that now I am finally popular. As some of you are aware, prior to nursing school, I performed stand-up comedy here in Portland, but I gave it all up to return to school to pursue my dream of becoming a nurse. When I showed up for my first day at Limfield School of Nursing, I felt kind of like Rodney Dangerfield in the movie Back to School um, in a sea of millennials. Uh, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Could I fit in? Today, I'm proud to say yes, I can fit in and I've risen to meet so many challenges alongside this amazing and inspiring cohort. Today, I've prepared some parting words to represent us all as the Limfield School of Nursing Class of Summer 2020. Never missing the opportunity to provide a good rubric, some, I received some guidelines for delivering this speech today, which included to definitely wear pants, uh, but also to be respectful which makes me wonder what happened in previous graduation speeches. In any event, in order to keep myself in check and on track, I've decided to utilize the SBAR format for this speech. For those tuning in who are not familiar, nurses use this format to communicate situation, background, assessment, and recommendations for our patients. So without further ado, here we go. Situation. In June, 2019, 53 students were brought together Today, they all present to this Zoom call for the nursing pinning ceremony. Over the last 14 months, these students formed a cohesive group and supported one another to meet challenges that were expected and some that were unforeseen. 
In fact, this cohort has experienced a unique set of circumstances that will set us apart as nurses. I'll never forget March 11th, the day all our lives changed when COVID-19 was officially declared a pandemic. I will also never forget March 13th, when we began to understand the implications of how nursing school would be affected and how a frustrated student eloquently expressed what all of us was feeling, exclaiming, I'm so done with this corona ass virus. While we definitely all shared that sentiment, this event permanently changed what the rest of nursing school would look like. It would also impact our lives both, both personally and professionally. I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the time before when we were all on campus and a pandemic was not part of our reality. Background, who exactly is this class? The answer is we are a group of people who come from different backgrounds and have had different life experiences and we all have talent. What were we doing before nursing school, you ask? The talents in our ranks, to name a few. We have an amazing baker whose generosity we all benefited from in the form of many delicious treats. A woodworker who can make a guitar or a canoe from scratch. A singer, like for real, in a band, not karaoke. A kayaker and crossword enthusiast. A hood to coast runner, a former roller derby player an airplane mechanic, yoga instructors, someone who can carve a bear out of a woodblock with a, with a chainsaw, gardeners, a unicyclist, and several who are fluent in multiple languages. I'd also like to extend honorable mention to students who are also parents and those who manage the demands of school while also holding down jobs. Things that happened along the way. Babies were born, puppies were adopted, loved ones passed on, People moved, there were breakups, a quarantine engagement happened, weddings happened, and I estimate that I personally consumed approximately 500 cans of LaCroix, as well as 250 burritos. But the common thread that drew us together is our shared passion for caring for others. In becoming nurses, we are all reaching self-actualization, the top of the pyramid of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, go us. Assessment, and I'd also like to include accolades in this section. Nursing is a field like no other. The range of skills one must master as a nurse is so broad. The support we had along the way was similarly multifaceted. It came from faculty, staff, and even the cute and friendly Linfield Courtyard Cat, who I'm pretty sure is also on the payroll as a therapy animal. Some honorable mentions. Dr. Michelle Didio, whose no-nonsense approach to instruction gave us a sense of confidence in our first days of school. But lest we become too cocky, she also provided sobering examples of the seriousness of nursing by reading us examples of misconduct from the back of the ANA magazine. My takeaway from that day was, wow, I hope I'm never in the misconduct section, mostly because I don't want to disappoint Didio. We had a lot of respect for her, and that respect was clearly mutual. Dr. Didio's dedication to her students was unwavering, and she always addressed us as peers with respect, candor, and a sense of humor. When Dr. Didio left, Dr. Gary Lawson had some big shoes to fill, and he rose to that challenge. How to describe him? If there was ever a cross between Bob Ross and Jim Henson, it would be Gary. His unconventional, he is unconventional, talented, and gentle, and encouraged us all by demonstrating that learning is a process and that we may not always get it right the first time. The point is to just keep at it. His exams and assignments were challenging, but they were all always balanced out with thorough explanations, exploration of concepts, and soothing pictures of animals, including his goose named Grace. When we had to go to an online format, he was always just an email away. He provided many supplemental, relevant articles, resources, and solid advice, even if your question wasn't really about nursing. At this time, I'd like everyone to reflect back when we were baby nurses on the ward for the first time in clinicals, how nervous we were. For some of us, it was the first time we touched an actual patient. Since that time, we've all grown in confidence, skills, and our respect for albumin. Which brings me to our clinical faculty. It's impossible to thank 
all that deserve recognition here, but I will just say that if it were not for the guidance and support of these wonderful instructors, we would definitely not be here today. I would also be amiss if I didn't acknowledge Kara Frank, our writing fellow, because with nursing's diverse demands, one day you're administering a suppository. The next day, by the same hand, you find yourself writing an annotated bibliography. So I'd like to extend a big shout out to Kara, who saved us all from the trappings of APA 6th edition, and also provided the writing advice that helped polish some subpar papers into shiny gems worthy of a Blackboard submission. Recommendations. One reason I'm just now getting around to entering the field of nursing is that I previously didn't realize the importance of mentorship. You can have perfect grades. Not that I did, this, was, this is just an example. But if you don't have a person who believes in you and shows you the way, those grades aren't worth much. So I recommend that everyone find yourself some mentors so that someday you can serve as a mentor to others. Our evolution as nurses does not end at graduation. It is the beginning of a long journey and we will all need the support of others on that journey in order to flourish. Nursing is also about leadership. And to me, nursing means, leadership means looking out for the most vulnerable and lifting them up. It means making space for people of color and other minorities to hold leadership positions. Leadership means exercising cultural humility with the patients that you serve. Caring and advocating for all patients, but especially those from stigmatized groups. And recognizing people at risk for receiving bad health care because of who they are. And that the intersection of multiple minority identities can compound that disparity. As an example, the coronavirus crisis has really laid bare the healthcare disparities faced by our black and indigenous patients. It has always been the responsibility of the nurse to advocate for their patient's well being, but we stand to make a real difference now more than ever. My last recommendation for nursing is to see increasingly inclusive leadership. All of us, no matter who we are, can play a role in this change, and we can certainly benefit from it. This means working for social justice. If you are white, it means sharing your power, making space to let others in. We have the power to change healthcare in so many positive ways. So the last 14 months have been a time I will never forget. I've made friends here who I, was, I, who I will always treasure and who I will always share a common bond with. But now the time has come to part ways again, to get off Zoom and take it to the hospital wards, the clinics, and to our communities. We are the Linfield School of Nursing class of 2020, and we are ready. Thank you, Diane. The students also select a faculty member to address them. This year's honored faculty member is Monica Hodge. Professor Hodge has been teaching at Linfield since July 2016. She has taught in the RN to BSN program, the traditional pre-licensure program, and the accelerated program. Professor Hodge holds national certification as a maternal newborn nurse and is a fantastic mentor to students. Please welcome Monica Hodge to the podium. Good afternoon to the nursing graduates and the family and friends that are joining us today. We are here to honor you, the summer class of 2020, and to acknowledge your hard work, dedication, perseverance, and to celebrate your many achievements today, as we also honor the immeasurable support that your family and friends have shown you along the way. I am so honored to be standing here today and to have been a part of your nursing journey. And what a journey these last 15 months have been as you've learned and grown so much, not only professionally, but in so many other ways as well. We are living in a time like no other, a time like we never experienced before or imagined we'd experience as a community, a nation, and as a world. Our experiences shape not only us, but those around us as well as the future. The class of 2020 is a very special class that will be remembered not only because of all the firsts you experienced with your fellow classmates, like virtual clinicals and praxis, Zoom happy hours, virtual yoga, and now virtual pinning, but also for the many lessons you've learned along the way, the obstacles you've overcome, and for the tremendous resilience you have shown. Today, we honor each of your unique stories and journeys. 
Nurses and the RN to BSN program these past several months have shared stories with me about working on the front lines despite many unknowns, a shortage of PPE, and working long hours away from their loved ones. They put their lives at risk so they could advocate and care for their patients, all while continuing with their studies in this program. You are amazing. Thank you for your heroic service. Students in the accelerated cohort share touching stories of how you managed to turn some of the disappointments and losses that came with COVID-19 into opportunities to care for one another, to share your struggles and fears with one another, and to work through them together. The very clinical experiences you had waited so long for were moved online, schedules and plans had to be rearranged, you got creative with childcare, you found ways to adapt to the many changes, stressors, and unknowns during the rigorous school workload that continued, all while trying to care for yourselves, your loved ones, and those around you. Your ability to lean on one another, your nursing family, for both educational and emotional support, and your determination is truly inspiring. It is no doubt that the class of 2020 will continue to have a profound impact on the future of nursing because of how these experiences have formed and strengthened you. Whether you're graduating with your BSN as a student in the accelerated program, or you are, or you are a nurse completing the RN to BSN program, you have what it takes to not only continue to face the current challenges around us, but to excel as you embrace them. I want to remind you today, as you take the next steps into the future, that you have what it takes to overcome anything. You graduate today with many valuable tools in your toolbox, a vast amount of knowledge, new skills and qualities you've developed, the ability to think critically, to innovate, a deeper commitment to compassion and newfound strength, wisdom and determination. You have become more empathetic, more patient and better listeners as you've encouraged one another. You have developed the confidence needed to propel you into the next chapter ahead. You have created memories that will forever be etched on your heart and you form deep bonds with one another that will last a lifetime. If you've ever taken one of my classes, you know that a talk with Professor Hodge would not be complete without me imparting a cheesy inspirational quote with you. So here I go. I recently came across a beautiful work of art depicting a woman gracefully embracing a baby in her arms. On her back was a massive bag that was loaded, and I mean overflowing, with things that she was simultaneously carrying. Various books, medicine bottles, a laptop, unpaid bills, pots, pans, and many, many other things. Beneath the picture, the artist, beneath the picture, the artist's caption read, just because she carries it well doesn't mean it isn't heavy. This is such a profound picture of so many of your journeys to and through nursing school. I want to acknowledge how far each of you have come and the heavy load you may have been carrying. It is also a reminder that many of the patients and people we do and will encounter in our nursing practice and even in our day-to-day -day lives, each carries a unique load. I want us to also remember that no matter how busy we may get, we must also make time and leave room to acknowledge the heavy load that each person we encounter may be carrying. As the saying goes, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Now is the time to do whatever is in our power to help ease that load, to be a little extra kind, to help promote healing, to comfort, to work together in love and with compassion so that we may overcome whatever lies ahead. You have each demonstrated that you are able to overcome even the most challenging of obstacles. Today more than ever, the world needs the irreplaceable gifts that you have to offer. Florence Nightingale, who is also known as the mother of nursing, said that nursing is an art. It requires as exclusive a devotion, as hard a preparation as any painter or sculptor's work. As you enter the profession of nursing and continue to shine your light wherever you go as Linfield Good Samaritan School of Nursing alumni, I am excited for the unique masterpiece that each of you will paint as you journey ahead in the work that you will do as a nurse. For the many ways that you will use these experiences that have helped mold you so that you can make the world more beautiful, one kind word at a time, one generous deed at a time, one patient at a time. I'm so proud of you.
I congratulate you, Summer Class of 2020, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the nursing profession. Thank you, Professor Monica Hodge. Today, we celebrate two different groups of students. Most are graduating from the pre-licensure program before becoming licensed as a registered nurse. The RN to BSN students are licensed registered nurses who have chosen to further their education by seeking the baccalaureate in nursing. Most of these students take this time-consuming program while still working full-time as a nurse. It takes incredible self-direction and commitment to return to school, but they have done it. Because this program is completely online, our RN to BSN students come from many different parts of the country and all over Oregon and most of them are joining us for today's pinning ceremony. Each semester, our faculty select students from both the pre-licensure and the RN to BSN program to receive awards for practice, leadership, and service. The Senior Honors Awards in Nursing. The criteria used by faculty for the selection of the Senior Honors Awards are a grade point average of 3.5 or higher on a 4.0 scale, and exceptional practice and clinical performance. Today, these graduates will receive this award and a certificate that reads, in recognition of your leadership skills and your caring, competence and professionalism in nursing practice, we hold you in high esteem and celebrate your excellence. Their names will also be engra engraved on a plaque that is located on the third floor of Peterson Hall. Please join me in congratulating these recipients. The RN to BSN recipient of the Senior Honors Award is Andrea Monroe. The pre-licensure recipient of the Senior Honors Award is John Pike. The Professional Excellence in Nursing Award. This award is not given every year. It is reserved for those years when a graduate is identified by a nursing faculty who excels in leadership, scholarship, and the human science of nursing. The following criteria are used to determine eligibility for this award. Caring for those around, clients, classmates, faculty, other professionals, self, and the community. A leader in clinical practice, student government, an effective communicator, a critical thinker who can see different perspectives and yet share their own personal outlook, a potentially skilled clinician scholar and in touch with the ability to influence and use power wisely. Please join me in recognizing Daniel Peterson. The Wilma Pope Award. This award honors Wilma Pope, Good Samaritan nursing graduate and former faculty who taught both in the Emanuel and Good Samaritan Diploma Schools of Nursing, as well as the Linfield Good Samaritan School of Nursing. The award speaks to characteristics that go beyond academic achievement to include, demonstrates caring and clinical practice, demonstrates clinical competence, models professional behavior, and demonstrates involvement and leadership in student organizations. Please join me in congratulating Eli Anderson. Traditionally, our students vote for two faculty members to pin them at this ceremony. And since we are celebrating virtually this year, our students voted to recognize and honor these two faculty. Please join me in congratulating Jennifer Bransfield and Dr. Gary Lauston. They each have some words of wisdom they would like to share with the summer 2020 graduating cohort. Well, first of all, I wanna thank the students um, for inviting me to share this moment with you and to celebrate this really amazing occasion of your pinning and becoming a nurse. My little talk, it's not really gram grammatically correct, but it's called, Now You Are Me. <clears throat> and it's my way of welcoming you as a new member of this amazing profession of nursing. I'm not gonna to try to offer you any specific advice. You'll figure that out uh, as you go along in nursing. However, I do wanna talk a little bit about being a nurse, something I've done for the last 29 years and something you are just beginning to experience. Not that being a nurse is really um, 
something that's easy, you'll often question your decision and maybe your sanity about becoming a nurse. But it's kind of like what they say about the Peace Corps. It's the toughest job you'll ever love. Even with all the different types of nursing that positions I've had, I've been an associate dean, a family nurse practitioner, a nurse educator, a ER and ICU nurse, even with all those different kind of positions, uh, when someone asks me what I do, I simply say, I am a nurse. The opportunities in nursing are many, and I've had the good fortune to experience a number of these. I will, just, I will mention just three, academic nursing, advanced practice nursing, and being a registered nurse you will also have many opportunities in your future. I encourage you to say yes whenever those opportunities come along. In my current role <clears throat> as a nurse educator, my costume is regalia. With the various cords and medals and bars and things, this is what points to my role as a academic nurse. I truly value and treasure the challenges and yet the wonderful parts of being a nurse educator. <clears throat> as an academic nurse, besides the teaching I do, I have also conducted research. I've worked with clinical projects for doctoral students and I've supervised clinical uh, activities for students of all different levels. For those of you that may want to become a nurse educator, there will be many opportunities in the future if you wish to pursue that path. But there are other ways to be a nurse. My next nursing outfit gives you an image of my work as a family nurse practitioner. As a role as a nurse practitioner, I participate in assessing, diagnosing, and treating the acute and chronic conditions of patients all across the lifespan. But when I do this, I always do it from the perspective of being a nurse. In this role, I've been able to work in EDs, student health centers, rural clinics, urban clinics, student, and my current role is as a volunteer family nurse practitioner at the free clinic in Vancouver, Washington. For many of you, becoming an advanced practice registered nurse, whether it's a nurse practitioner, a nurse anesthetist, a clinical nurse specialist, or a certified nurse midwife could be in your future. But for many, the wearing of scrubs is the outfit that perhaps most clearly identifies us as a nurse. The color and style of scrubs really don't make much difference. But when I put on a pair of scrubs and put my stethoscope around my neck, it's what really makes me feel like a nurse. Whether in acute care, public health, long-term care, it will be a special moment for you the first time you don your scrubs on the first day of being a registered nurse. 
Now, don't worry, I'm not going to take off any more clothes. I'm done. But <clears throat> you are no longer a nursing student. And I want to be one of the first people to congratulate you and welcome you as a nursing colleague. No matter what costume you end up wearing as a nurse, the academic attire of regalia, the lab coat of a clinic, or the scrubs in a hospital, remember, now you are me and we are all nurses. Thank you. My heart is full today as we celebrate your pinning. I'm so grateful I had the chance to work with you. When I look at you now, my assessment is that you represent some of the finest Linfield grads ever. Your brains are perfused with knowledge. You are alert and oriented several times over. Your reflexes are strong and your hearts are teeming with compassion. You face down the challenge of finishing your BSN degree under extraordinary circumstances. And while it was hard sometimes, you did it with character and class. You're truly my champions. I'm sending a big virtual hug to each and every one of you. And I look forward to keeping in touch to celebrate even more as you tackle the NCLEX and start your new nursing career. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Lauston and Professor Bransville. I'd like to say a few words as your Dean at this uh, momentous occasion of your pinning. I want to acknowledge that virtual pinning is not what you expected when you first came to Linfield School of Nursing. And I want to acknowledge that you are living through a time of extreme uncertainty. However, one thing is certain, you are part of something historic and your nursing story will always begin with, I was in nursing school during the largest global pandemic in the history of the world. COVID-19 has been the backdrop against which recent events have unfolded throughout a summer defined by wearing masks, abiding by physical distancing, and searching for elusive study spaces, we have experienced something else, isolation. And isolation gives us space for personal reflection. Post-reflections, we're actively engaging in difficult discussions, the fate of nurses on the front lines, the safety of protesters in our backyards, the plight of colleagues marching for Black Lives Matter, and the unsettling presence of federal agents on the streets in Portland. Amidst this black backdrop, we at Linfield are embarking on a mission to identify and dismantle systemic racism in our institution. Why? Partly because it's the right thing to do, but also because Racism is a significant public health problem. Black, indigenous, and people of color, and LGBTQIA folks are significantly more likely to experience lower quality health and have inequitable access to education and experience prejudice in their personal and professional lives. One result of this prejudice is stress. Stress itself contributes to medical conditions such as high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, chronic pain, and even eye disease. People of color are five times more likely to die of gun homicide than their white colleagues. On average, more than 500 Oregonians die this way each year. We all have major public health problems to solve, and we need the voices and experiences of all persons at the table to take on this major challenge. In the case of the current pandemic, Black Americans are on average two times as likely to die of COVID-19 as their white colleagues. Indeed, majority Black counties make up 60% of the COVID-19 deaths, and Black patients are less likely to receive a COVID-19 test if they need it. Framing racism as a public health issue is not going to dismantle it automatically, but it is a step in the right direction. Viewing racism as a modifiable determinant of public health offers legislators, health officials, and others a clear way to collect and analyze data and dismantle problematic institutional norms. For example, we need to dismantle practices that restrict the ability to vote in communities of color. 
In nursing, we need to rethink national standardized testing, including the NCLEX. For parents and friends, the NCLEX is a high, high stakes standardized test that allows your uh, graduate to sit uh, to become a registered nurse. And in most states, including Oregon, schools are judged on their first time pass rate. But what happens if the student is sick on test day or has to work a long shift the night before or can't secure childcare? There is no evidence that a student who passes NCLEX on the second or even third attempt is any less caring and competent a nurse as those who pass on the first attempt. Nursing needs a one-year NCLEX pass rate, not a first-time NCLEX pass rate. This is just one example of an institutional norm that needs to change. But it's not just about actions from nursing leaders and political leaders. At the end of the day, you have to win over people, not just their heads, but you have to really win over their hearts and over their minds. Be authentically you. Look inward, be willing to learn from each other. When we can have those serious discussions, then we can authentically talk about race. In closing, I want to let you know how proud I am to be your dean. I have a lot to learn from you. You are now our alumni and our colleagues, and I'm strengthened and inspired by your energy, your positivity, and your creativity. These traits will elevate all we will do together as nurses. Regardless of how you fight to dismantle practices that marginalize the most vulnerable in our society, your story will be about the pioneering work you did here at Linfield in the midst of COVID-19. Be the nurse who revolutionizes the future. Be the nurse who assures equitable healing for all our communities and all our patients. Thank you. And now, what we're really here for today to celebrate our graduates. I would like to acknowledge graduating students from both the RN to BSN program and the pre-licensure program. Due to these challenging times, students' names were pre-recorded and we want to apologize in advance for any mispronunciation. But students, you have earned the honor to wear the Linfield pin. And today we honor you for a job well done. In doing so, we honor nursing. Feel free to applaud and comment in the chat box to honor your graduate. Benjamin Anderson. Eli Anderson. Marielle Ater. Kristen Baker. Megan Baer. Zachary Berquist, Danica Lauren Betts, Shayna Bowl, Danielle Bronstein, Madeline Carpenter, Cynthia Senar. Kendra Clinton, Michelle Carmen Cushing, Sarah Denham, Sharon Dodge, Jessica Emerson, Molly Epperson. Guillermina Flores, Caroline Fowler, Sarah Frazier, Lauren Garza, Diane Gasprin, Vladimir Gasporian. Abigail Goga, Jessica Grinstead, Hunter Hansen, Timothy Hobazal, 
Jennifer Johns, Monica Johnson Tamanka, Matt Johnson, Molly Johnson, Charlotte Jazz Jones, Zena Kara. John Adam Cook Cook, Emily Kuenzi, Teresa Lai, Lofton Langsdorf, Rachel Lankins, Claudia Lee, Tiffany. Lee Kunga Legkyong Jennifer Loftus Shana Loomis Della Ann Llewellyn Ian Mass Aaron Megs, Sarah Merritt, Leslie Michaelis, Desiree Morden, Andrea Munro, Annika New, Cosette. Palmer, Aaron Paradis, Evan Patterson, Zachary Peterson, Daniel Peterson, Johnny Pike, Melissa Rast. Ashley Sardarian, Jesse Shapiro, Susan Silva, Peter Simonson, Faith Emma Soto, Elizabeth Stewart. Ashley Tombalane, Valentina Tran, Ariel Waba, Shim Wynn, Matthew Wurr, Catherine Wong. Dominique Woodland, Jessica Woodruff, Hui Zhang. Congratulations. This is the conclusion of our program. And to you, we say, we wish you all the best. Please stay in touch. Welcome to the profession of nursing and stay safe. Congratulations, nurses.